Boom, and we're in. And today I have again back on the show. Yes. The incredible Cisco Gomez. Francisco Gomez. Francisco Javier Francisco Gomez. Francisco Javier Gomez. 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 Let's Gomez. go. Gomez. Star. Wow. Um, speech impediment. Wow. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, it's a very exciting day for me today. Probably yeah, not so you. much for you. More I'm joking. For, <laughs> <laughs> more for me because you're teaching up my dance program. I am. Uh, in Swindon, the Internet's Dance training program, which for me is like a huge milestone because I think I was telling Jake on the podcast the other day how things kind of like come full circle. And mm -hmm. I remember you judging me at UDO probably 2008 or something like that. And I was like, I want to be like Cisco, <laughs> but I couldn't get an Afro. So I couldn't live up to that life. But I'll never forget Damn. you had like a yellow SpongeBob t-shirt on. Yes. Did I have my rope chain? Yeah. And a rope chain yeah. and I couldn't find a rope chain and I couldn't pull it off, but I did go and get a Spongebob t-shirt and wear one. You've never shirt. said that, Kane. Yeah, I know. This is a special moment, right? So I mean, this is weird. This is full circle. And then, uh, yeah. Fine. No, inspired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then once upon a time, my dream was to be in Dance to Excess. And then you got into Dance to Excess. I did. And I just was like, when I think about it, I'm like this, what, over a decade, a decade later, mm -hmm. that now you're coming to teach at my program. So, you know, full circle. For me, this is a, very proud moment for myself, but also a grateful moment for you coming and for being part of my journey. Of I course, guess. I'll always support you because you're doing it right. I feel like you've always done it right. You've, you've taken your time and um, it shows. And so when I got asked to support your brand, I was like, of course, because once upon a time you supported mine. Sweet. So it's only right. It is. So thank you very much, first of all, for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, of course. And then, so today I want to kind of touch on the topic of what it takes to become a great, not good, because we don't settle for good and mediocre, what it becomes to become a great commercial dancer, like mm. a working dancer. Mm -hmm. So not just a dancer who, you know, dances like a battle scene or all that kind of stuff. Right. To like make a full successful career. If there's like five things, if we can get to five, I'm mm -hmm. sure you can do it easy. Um, like five things that you think would make a great working dancer. Um, versatility, professionalism, mental capacity, mental health, and um, who you surround yourself with, so mm -hmm. company. Okay, so the first one was versatility. Yeah. So what when you say versatility within like the commercial world, what kind of things do you think? Well, I think if you train? just I just think you should take your versatility outside the bubble of commercial or MT or anything like that. I just think you have to try to master as many styles as possible, especially if you're not blessed enough to go to a dance college or something like that, where you're actually being trained and someone's down your throat with the training. You know what I mean? Like you have to understand the um, the hip hop foundations drills. You have to understand African um, dance. You have to understand, um, you know, the femme side of jazz funk, the masculine side, what is a la mode, who came before you. Mm -hmm. All of this training is important because as a commercial dancer, you're supposed to be a blank canvas. You know, um, entitlement or preference should never be at the forefront of your performance or what you bring forth in, mm -hmm. a, in, in a job. So, oh, I'm supposed to be Broadway today. Sure, no problem. Okay, today you're witches and you, you know, you're supposed to, you're inspired by Hogwarts and you were, you're doing a jazz funk piece. No problem, do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like, preference should be in the back. Yeah. Do as many styles as possible. Just because when you do come on the job, you don't want to have that moment like, oh crap, I can't do this. So I'm blagging it. Mm. You Be know. Because yourself, like I know, but like you're very versatile. Mm. I think a lot of people probably don't realize how versatile you are. No, they're not. I think they just assume Cisco does jazz funk. Yeah, I do. But it, it's weird because like if I wasn't gay, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Mm. The only reason why people think I only do jazz funk or that femme stuff is because that's what caught their eye because no one was doing it you mm. know what I mean but before I had my moment I was in Jimmy Williams's classes twice a week for nearly eight years mm. you know what I mean um I was trained by culture shock and then you know what I mean Kimberly Taylor was one of the biggest influences of my hip-hop vocabulary because she was my dance captain and then became my assistant um director for dance to excess so that style of hip-hop was always always present on top of me going to master classes stalking Marty Kadelka, Eddie Morales you know what I mean I stalked them around Europe and I would go to LA once or twice a year so my my training was always more hip-hop than jazz funk mm. because I knew that that came naturally to me and I knew that I had a handicap coming back to London or Europe because I was a gay hip hop dancer or street dancer, dancer you know what I mean? Mm. But yeah, she's which, versatile. Which I guess then was like 
you know, you were, you were put into a category and in a box. They tried. But they tried. Mm -hmm. but, but now there's no reason for that because I feel like it's so much more... So oh, fluid now. So fluid. Everyone so can fluid. be anything yeah. they want, right? So fluid. And, it, you know, it's... It, Obviously, once one person starts it, it gets easier and easier. But now as the industry starts embracing the new pronouns and is, you know, slowly warming up more to anything that's homosexual or anything in between, mm. um, it's it's getting easier finally for dancers not, in, not having to force themselves to be in a masculine construct. Mm. You know, not to say that you shouldn't know how to do that, but you can be yourselves. Where like, when I was coming out, I was force feeding people that this is me because there was no one like me and I was like you're gonna take me anyway yeah you know what I mean so I had to forcefully change opinions but that was difficult because people weren't ready for it but now it's like mm. I guess like kind of like we were saying earlier but you had no representation to go I'm at like all that. I honestly and I felt from the beginning I was the only one not saying that there wasn't gay people in the commercial industry because there were but I came from the competition on uh, back then it was called the underground scene when like there was no one who was out and proud and no one was doing like I guess gender bending or anything femme and definitely no one was moving like the Americans now there was dancers that went to America before me like Jerry Reeve Sean Niles Royston Caramel Charlene Sutherland and stuff like that but they didn't export the style or premiere it here, so that was me. Mm. So on top of being a flaming homo with like big hair, <laughs> I also was moving like what was coming in the future. Yeah. It was too much. And I was experimenting with fashion around the same time as well. So I was always a production. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But it was too much for people, but I didn't care. I just didn't care. And I was look like, at you now. Look at me now. It made it. <laughs> it survived. She made it. <laughs> she survived. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you've just spent how long Six. in LA? Just under six years. Six years. Mm -hmm. What was it like going, obviously without COVID, but what was it like going back there after going there and being like kind of like the pioneer of bringing the style back? What's it like then going and living there? Um, Because I, I've been going there since 18. It's LA is like a loose second home because I don't particularly like LA, but I love my people there and I love the pockets that I belong to there. Yeah. So it wasn't, it it wasn't too much of an adjustment. It's just like, oh, I can take class every day now. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I'm always taking class anyway. It was okay. It was, it wasn't, the adjustment wasn't that massive because, you know, one of my best friends lived there too. So it was like even better. Yeah. The weather was a perk. I think I was, I felt like, I, it felt for the first four years at least that I was always on holiday. Which vacation. puts you in the best mood. Vacation. What, dude, is that what you hear? Vacation? No, no. Oh, it's, okay, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, <laughs> what did you find it like working there? Like, was it di was there a big difference between working in, in LA and working in London? Yes, because I think, um, which was just an, an observation, when you walk into these spaces as an assistant choreographer or choreographer or even a teacher, they don't know who you are. Out there. Yeah. My peers do. Mm. So like all the people that are booking the jobs or are directing or who are choreographing, they all know Cisco. But the kids, like the dancers, the up and coming, they have no idea. So it was weird to walk into a space where I almost have to show and prove mm. myself because there was a few, um, like two jobs I can remember where like, they were brats to me. And I was like, I'm sorry, like Google this shit. Like I am not going for, I don't have to prove myself to you. You are my dancer, okay? Yeah. And I'm not a person in a job that's like bow down bitches or like, I'm your choreographer, give me 20. I ain't that person. But when you're giving me ego, when I'm a step ahead of you, uh -huh. no, surely not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you would go to like a carnival or dinners and then I would be there and then they would be like, how, where, what, because they want that C. And it's like, do your research, bitch. Like I ain't a random. It's just <laughs> that I had a different territory that I was playing with and now I'm here. Yeah. But because that shit doesn't matter to me. And I really loved that I was, I had a more low key life there. Like it was easier to take class. If I would be in dance functions, it wouldn't be like the Red Sea partying and everyone going, oh my God, this, 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 this. Like, and I just loved being a regular schmegler guy. So it was great. It mm. was great for dating. It was great for um, just walking in the street. It was great for teaching because then my class had more of an impact because unless it was in the summertime where like all the European heads or like the odd head that, you know, lives in a random country would come to LA, they'd be like, oh, that's Cisco. Yeah. These LA kids didn't know. They're just, oh, let's go take that class. Who's Cisco? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then they would take my class and be like, oh my God. And I can't be, do it. <laughs> well, no, actually they could actually, because yeah. it's LA, but they'll be like, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, hi, welcome. 
Yeah. And then they'll ask random questions. And then as you start, you know, saying one or two jobs that you've done, they're like, oh, and you're like, yeah. So it was great. What What did you think of the caliber of dancer? Like, did you notice a big difference between oh, the standard between here and yeah, there? Yeah, you can't. You can't compare. I mean, there are a few dancers in Europe that really are the same level, if not better. Mm. Absolutely. But America in general, they're just freak of nature. And the new school dancers that are coming up now, the ones that come from like the convention world, no one in London can touch them. Like, like maybe of Maddox, maybe of Bishop, maybe a Jason, a Zach Millen, maybe a Dylan. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's put them at the forefront. Everyone else, good luck. Get yeah. in the queue. They're just wildly talented. Why do you think that is? Because they've got so many more teachers. The studio life and the way, even like a, a, a what, I would say a six out of 10 studio is in America, it's still a nine or 10 out of 10 here. Yeah. It shits on all the colleges. Like there, like when it comes to versatility, a body strengthening, gymnastics, like little perks as well. These like, they, and they can afford these masterclass teachers to come in. They're just like trained like machines before they even strike puberty. Like mm. it's, crazy it's crazy and even like when the choreography is not 100 percent, and you see them do what they're good at like their solos or whatever you're just like when i was that age i could i i, I wasn't even i could i wouldn't be worthy to be mm. dancing me there they are freaks and they are starving so what do you think we have to do here to get to their standard i don't think we can't i don't think we can it's too many years ahead it's too many years you would have to create a school copying that format, having teachers equivalent to that slash teachers from there to teach technique. Because the technique, the methods and the way they teach technique here, there's very few that do it here. Mm. And technique is the basis of everything. It'll help you with your hip hop, it'll help you with your freestyle, it'll help you with everything. If you've got an incredible foundation of technique where you know your body before you get into those styles that are your preference, your, your caliber is just beyond. Because the facility they have allows them to kind of jump and camouflage to other styles. Yeah. That's why they're so good. Yeah, because even like their dancers, which I think we don't even like categorize as a technical dancer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my favorites, like like people like Devin Jameson, like Misha Gabriel, mm. obviously they're an older generation of dancer now, but like we don't, we put them as the forefront of like hip hop dancers. Hip -hop, or, or but no, they're technicians. But like, Technicians, te yeah, technicians. They are, like, they are <laughs> though. And and Nick Bass and and um, even Kenny, like, they're all super. They, they were doing tondus and and chenets and pro progressions across the floor before they even touched Marty Kadelka. Mm. This is why they're so fly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, there's a few of us that didn't have the honor to like have that type of training. So, but we were smart. We were like, well, what classes did you do before you got to your speciality classes? Because that obviously helped. Mm. And so that's where. Like for example, like a Tucker who's more, um, who went to a studio, but you know, pretty much his amazingness came from being self-trained. Yeah. When you do, if you do his classes to get him before he be was known as amazing, you're gonna be amazing because those classes helped. Yeah. You just don't have the technique. And if you've got the technique, it's like amazing. That's why these people like Jade are just like, even though maybe right now she's not hot topic, she'll still be the baddest bitch of her generation. Charlize still be the baddest bitch yeah. because Hello. It's just the vocabulary. It's just, you can't compare it. You mm. just cannot. Yeah. What they can do is just. So now you're back here. Yeah. How do you feel about dance after spending so much time there? Well, I only stayed in LA for an extra three years because I was, I was going to a hosting school, right? And so any other job that I was getting there was just, uh, just extra to pay the bills. I definitely fulfilled my choreography and teaching career. So when it was time to come back, I was ready because the pandemic happened. So um, that was going to be my year to try it out there as a host in London, in, in LA, but that fell through. You know, we were all isolating. When I came back, it was just nice to be back home and just get recharged and seeing familiar faces regularly and teaching, because um, I'm not taking choreography jobs anymore, really. At all? No. Um, because those directors and producers, I want them to see me as a judge or a host now, so I can't be choreographing as well. Mm. I have to make that separation, you know? And also it's like, um, I really, cause 2020 took me out psychologically. I've really come back to terms of who I am, what I've done and what my worth is. Mm. So those price tags and working with certain people won't do it for me anymore. Mm. And so I'm not gonna allow a circumstance or a job take my love for something that I was one of the pioneers for, or I was at the forefront for. Mm. Like I've, I've 
replayed my victories and I'm in this amazing place where it's my memories, my accolades, my, my mission completed. And so I'm careful with what I do. I teach because I want to. I teach certain people because I know I'm there, I'm needed and that's that. Gone are the days where I'm working for a reality show trying to teach a basic person how to be a star. It's my turn. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm conserving my energy because what I did find out was before the pandemic, the reason why I didn't have enough energy or the um, kind of the arsenal to protect myself was because it was years of just giving and giving. And because I don't expect it back, it was very harmful. Mm. So when it was time for me to go to autopilot mode, I had nothing. Mm. I had nothing to like defend myself because it was the pandemic was something that um, triggered so much because it was a whole year and a half of work gone. And mm. of all the times I've been in LA, that particular year and a bit was all international gigs. And I lost everything. And mm. I'm I'm at the point now where I can work two or three times and not have to work for the rest of the year. So that's big money. Yeah. I, I don't have. Helping my mum out, can't do that. Can't work, all the studios are closing. Everyone's doing cyber um, <laughs> Zoom classes. Couldn't think of anything worse. So I was just like, what do you do? Yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. And so now coming back, it's like I teach where I want to because I want to. I teach because that's the only thing that it's really in the industry that gives me joy. And yeah. don't get me wrong. I, if I take a, a choreography job, it's because it's not going to hinder my future as a host. Yeah. Um, and maybe because it's an opportunity with someone that I haven't worked for. Mm -hmm. Or I'm trying to knock on a different door to be like, oh, hi, I'm a, I'm a host also. Yeah. Nice to see you. I'm network. Now no, I'm no longer shy of networking. Yeah. I, it, this whole bullshit, oh, I'm so talented, it's going to come to me. Doesn't no. happen <laughs> at it's all. Not. So with my hosting career, I'm definitely more aggressive. Yeah. So long as I'm not stepping on anyone's toes, I'm getting my shit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I've had to say no to like three or four good jobs here. And I've been like, <gasps> it's weird, isn't it? How you get pigeonholed. Like, yeah, if you like, if they see you as a choreographer, then they can't see you as anything Yeah, and else. because actually Banjo and the other black kind of um, hosts are kind of there already. I've missed the, the my chance because I never thought of making it here as a host. So now... Ashley Banjo is at the forefront for those, for if you want a person of color who's like, yeah. you know, a host, but he does dancing, you know what I mean? It's okay for him to do it, yeah. but like with me, it's, you're always still Cisco. But because I've always worked s s under someone, it's even more difficult to give me that chance. So I'm not proving to anyone mm. that I can do this. It's just like, fine, I'll go to Sydney or I'll go back to LA. Yeah. Because I like my life here. Yeah. Like, I like it here, but I don't want to... I'm not going to spend time convincing you how amazing of a host I can be. Mm. What what kind of things would you want to host? Like what kind of show would you want? I'm to trying host? to do anything. What I won't do is kids shows. What I won't do is politics and I I will try to stay away from sports because if I can do sports but it's I will know nothing about it. I'm yeah. just reading the prompter and like fake hoots. Yeah. You know what I mean? But everything else I'm good. I'm good at, at a panel show because I'm good at debating or fixing problems. I'm good at uh, hot topics or if it's like fashion based, mm. like uh, um, anything where my gob can't be censored, well, I'm good for. I, would be, I was watching that, I like the way you move. The new dance I haven't program. even seen that. Right, right. So I was watching that and KK's on it. Yeah. And then what's the guy's name? Anyone know? The guy from... Um, um, the blonde guy. From... Um, you guys can answer if you know. Made in Chelsea, quite. right? Yeah. And yeah. I, was, I was watching... What's his name? Jamie Lang, yeah. And yeah. I was watching it like, he's got nothing to do with dance. Nothing to do with dance. Like, but you know, do you know, do you know what's funny though? Ironically, like there was an opportunity, there could have been an opportunity for me to be even put up for that. But I was it, like, you and KK would have been perfect And it didn't for that. happen. So what I've known, what I've noticed now that I've had all these years, two decades almost, well, two decades of being in the commercial industry and I've worked with so many people and I sent them my media kit, reintroduced myself and whatever. And some people I work with closely and what I've realized is some people can't help me, they've tried, and mm. some people won't help me. Mm. And some people are giving those hosting opportunities to someone else because they don't want to see me go past that, that next level. Mm. I'm very, very good at clocking off who's for me and who's not for me, right? Yeah. But this, that series and another um, show that's coming out, there could have been an opportunity for me even to be a stand-in. Yeah. And they're not giving it to me. These are people I fuck with. And I'm just like, cool. It just reminds me of my career when I first started, when I had all these things against me. And I'm like, 
I work so good under pressure and I work so good when there's when I've got a whole arena of haters or people that want to see me just in that light. And what's sad as well is that no one in my friend circle is doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Who wants to be the Latina Oprah? Like who wants to be the next Graham Norton? No one. So what why are you sweating? Watch me soar. Help me out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because these people help, help me get there. Like help me get there. It's like, only gonna help them in the long run. Like, hello. It's like for me, it's like another family member's succeeding yeah. or soaring. But... Especially knowing you, like you're such a like you say, giving person that mm. if you get somewhere and then you're of a position to help, you would help them. Oh my like automatically. Like, like I know I, that. You know yeah. what I mean? It's but it's but it's cool. It just it just means that my time is not yet, and this season of transition, besides humility and patience, I, there's other things that I must learn. Whether it's via people, whether it's through a company, whether it's a relationship that I have to make that hasn't come yet, that's going to actually give me the opportunity. Who knows? But I'm ready. I'm alert, and I'm like all eyes and ears on deck. You know what I mean? But yeah. I'm like, oh, I see you. It's a shame, but because of my de my detachment with dance has been almost like a three year kind of moment. I now hold more power to myself as opposed to this duty to to maintain a standard for an industry that that's not a person. So what am I expecting back from this thing? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, so that's why when- Cause like you were the forefront of our industry, like in my eyes. At one point like, I was one of them, yeah. It was like you, you held the standard, you used to keep everyone accountable if mm. they were shit, if no one could get through Brian's combo X Factor, you'd be the one making sure we could yeah, throughout I mean, the rest of the year. It was a particular tailored training that, you know, because when we came out, Dance Success came out, that changed the standard. Mm. And so I think I and our people affiliated with 2XS really held that for a, lo for a long, long time. Um, but now that things have changed and dance changes, which is incredible because the choreographers out now are just oh, amazing. But unfortunately, um, there's, there's a massive gap now. It's not what it was, not because of the dance, but because of the standard, mm. because of the professionalism, because of the mental capacity, because of star quality, mm. where, I, where is it? And you look at the teachers that are teaching, great steps, but you ain't teaching past the steps. Mm. Now, not my problem. I teach, and if I've got 15 people, thank you for coming. If I've got 60, great, thank you for coming. But it's no longer my business, nor do I care to help, because I've done my, I've done I've done it. Yeah. I've done it for a long time. You think Paul Roberts is doing that? No. You think like... No. So why am I, why am like, I like, like, Cisco, chill. The people chill. before you aren't doing Ch it. Like, chill, Cisco. Like, good luck, kids. Um, what, is there anything, like, is there a job in particular that would bring you back to dance? Dance? Yeah. Yeah. Um, to just to test my training, um, Gaga and, um, Chris Brown or Usher. Nice. Cause like, Usher circa like early 2000s, I would fuck that shit up. Yeah. Like, let me dance at that again kind of thing um chris brown i think because that will test my hip-hop training to the max the max and he's like not very so i've heard allegedly he's not very friendly or uh too welcoming to uh, a homosexual dancer oh so you break the barrier absolutely because you i know you're like me yeah and you know i know i'll be a vibe and also like you will see just it will be a vibe you yeah. know what I mean? And it would just be great to just be in that camp because I really like the choreography. I wonder, is he? No, he's had gay dancers before though, right? He has, but it's been... So Wiley and Darrell. Yeah. And Darrell Because they did been... Fine China, right? Huh? I think they did Fine China, the video. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, um, but they're both there because the choreographers at the time like are pushing it. He would never choose that dancer. Yeah. And with Darrell in particular, he's had, if I'm not mistaken, kind of like a show and prove situation when like he's an all-star <laughs> like <laughs> he icon. should be like <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like should you be allowed to have me work for you do you know what i mean yeah. like do you want me to do you would you choreograph the girl sections for me yeah like, you know that's <laughs> yeah. kind of, but it, that didn't happen so it'll be nice um and gaga more for choreography not for dancing just because no shade i don't really like her choreography anymore um but um it's just it's it'll be the only artist where i don't have to adjust or camouflage who i am mm. You know, I know with a Gaga music or a Gaga song or whatever silly or amazing character we're playing, I can just be. Would you do a Janet again? <laughs> Who wouldn't? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, the Janet would be great because it would be like, can I still do that? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, because the last cast of Janet for the Vegas show was just like... So dope. Oh, I was just like, wow. Wow. If I picked a weakest link it's because i really have the magnifying glasses out there yeah like if i and what's dope is they're all different 
they're not even all like the same dancers like but like denzel and kylin like but they're different but they all hold to the same standard that's because they all trained correctly yeah like because like if you think of kylin like i look at kylin as a new york hip-hop head but yeah. actually he's technical as fuck <sighs> he's like his contemporaries dancer. natalie santiago incredible. like my favorite new school dancer that vincent one of my favorite canadian vincent. yeah one like literally is like if if there was a Vincent per job, it would be, he's just excellent. Mm. But then he's surrounded by excellent people too. You know what I mean? And it's like, it was just great. It I remember seeing great. him in class once and had no idea who he was. Who Vincent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, yo. Like, you know, you're like, oh, that's the standard of the white boy in this room. I need to pull up. Like, you know, no, you go, he's, he's, he's that's no. my competition. I need he's to pull up. He's the truth, man. He's so good. Him and Natalie are like, one of one, some of my favorite dancers out there. Like, just because it's just like, it doesn't matter what I do, mm. you'll be able to do it. And even probably like top it. Mm. Like, oh, great. Sick. So good. So if you could give uh, a piece of advice to someone who's trying to break into like the dance industry to be a dancer, obviously performing, mm -hmm. what would it be? Think about it. Um, Cause it's just not worth your happiness. I think your, your mental health and your happiness will be tested <laughs> daily. Um, and a, a lot of people aren't taught about that or or kind of premiere their depression or decline of mental health while they're in the industry. Mm. It's just not worth it. If you're not a tough cookie or able to adapt in in stressful spaces, it's not for you, regardless of how good of a dancer you are. Because like it is the most incredible job ever. But like I always say, which is which we kind of spoke about it before. Like my most stressful, one of my most stressful jobs was the first time doing X Factor with you, and I was like, oh, X Factor isn't fun. Like it's horrible. Like and I was yeah. like, this is the this is the job where we all like praise and like everyone wants to uh -huh. do it. And then doing the semi final and the final, I was like, oh, this isn't fun. I told you guys like, that. Like this is actually I told you this guys. is work. I was like, like the audition is like the yeah. Like we're all like yes, we booked and then it, you, you get killed there it. And you're like, <gasps> and then you're like, oh, you're doing the 19th version of the same number. You're like, mm -hmm. mm. and reversing it by the yeah. time I get to the stereo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just think, you know, train, be versatile and stuff like that. And just try to have like a, a base as well. Even if it's one or two people of that are going to like support you, edify you, not have jealousy around you. Mm. Just because um, after every day, it's just good to go back to someone that can hear you and truly relate to you. Mm. And I think because you're going to feel isolated and rejected, you know, nine times out of 10, whilst being in this industry, at least have um, some heart somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think if you can have that, that heart in the same industry, which I'll understand what you're going through is a win. Of course. Cause like, is. obviously like your mum or your dad or whatever, yeah, 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 but they're yeah, never yeah. gonna fully understand no, no, what no, the fuck no, is no. going on. That's exactly what I meant. Someone yeah. that's who's like a comrade in the same fight. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, like I had a John, you know what I mean? Like that was my, mm -hmm. yeah. I'd be like, go back and be like, this audition was shit. And he'd be like, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, shout out John. He's just a legend, man. I love John. Well, dude, we gotta go get teaching. Oh, well, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> time, time be a ticking. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for coming again. On. Of course. I'm sure we'll do this again soon. I'm sure we will. Um, are you still doing your Instagram uh, hosting? Hosting, stuff? yeah. So an IG at Cisco Gomez and um, relaunching everything end of December or first week of January because mm. I've taught myself how to edit. Let's go. Even further. So now I've got like, now I know how to do like, you know, the little emojis and the little title pop ups and stuff. So I'm kind of like, redoing everything to launch my YouTube. Stuff. I was waiting for like your EMA's recap. I didn't, do you know why I didn't do it? I was- um, You didn't watch it. No, 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 oh, I, you didn't. no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> there was so much drama attached to that. And if I'm being honest, I wanted to talk more of the drama backstage because I feel so rightly about that shit that I was just like, I don't want like, Yes, I want to talk about the shows, but I really want to talk about that. So I feel like if I talk about the performances, I'm not being honest. Yeah. And there's a few episodes out there where I'm not being honest and I've got um, host face on. Yeah. Because of what I was going through in life. But I was like, I'm not going to get stuck in the couch again. I'm going to do work. I don't want to do content like that anymore. Yeah. So I was like, you know, what, just go chill. Yeah. There's no point because I want to talk about the tea that's happened and, you know, the parasites attached to that yeah. choreography gig. But I was just like, zip it. Don't do it. Once you make it, you can start cutting. Oh, now I wish we had another half hour to go in, yo. To name and shame people. <laughs> you know who you are. I will, as soon as this camera's off. That's fast. Oh, 35. Oh, we got some time. Go on. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs>
down. <laughs> no, you, you don't know, need, just, you don't need to turn your No, down. no, I'll say this. Just people get into places in the industry because of who they're fucking, not because of their talent, not even as a dancer, stepping on people's toes and fucking literally side swooping. That has always Legends. happened though. No, but when it's close to home, like yeah. stop it. Stop the fuck it. Because some like for example, this choreographer because they're attached to someone that works in a different department, they are guaranteed the job. And so this person, even though they haven't been officially booked as that part, manages to become a consultant of some type. And so I, this person has walked on stage where the other choreographers are doing their things and then they just come and just like, can you imagine that being done to me? Like I would yeah. grab that person by the throat and be like, fuck right off. <laughs> Like, I can't, the audacity of it all, Jenny. Yeah. She's a culture vulture too. And also it's just like, how did you get there? It's just, ama it's amazing how you got there. Now the agency that got side swooped, they haven't been handing that job well for a few years in the past. So I'm like, dose of karma. But the person that should have been choreographing wasn't choreographing and you can't fuck with that person because they're 25 years in the industry with a, with a, with a what do you call it? A career that's compared to no other. Mm. So have respect. Mm. And you know what? I'm going to go as far as saying, bow down, bitches. Like, know your place. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because if that would have been my tea and my job in that situation, I would have caused a ruckus, bitch. <laughs> but again, I don't care. So I didn't, I just, I just, you know, get my popcorn out and just like. Because that's not your world anymore. It, I don't care. And, and I just, I don't care. I was like, if you're going to let someone like that foreplay you out of your opportunities and the agency evolved isn't hasn't got the, the the balls to like hold their own, uh, hold the person that's represented your agency and kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Made your agency look hot, you mm -hmm. know, for so long because you just want to make sure you don't burn bridges to keep dancers in there. That's a you problem, bitch. That is not a me problem. Mm -hmm. But again, those are things I'm so glad I'm not involved in, but going back to the subject we were talking about, if I was talking about the EMAs, I would want to dissect that give a timeline of that choreographer, how they got to this, the jobs. Look at, look at this. Yeah. This was done by blah, 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 not this person. Funny enough, they were actually a generation after or the tail end of my generation as a dancer, couldn't even single them out. Mm. Weren't even a dancer of a caliber, not even a C class, no shade. Mm. Someone tell me otherwise. And now you're choreographing and directing because of a hand, because of, um, because your man is a lighting director or whatever. Sit down, love. Sit the fuck down. I'm mm. so happy that's not in my circumference, in my peripheral, because I would handle it differently. Because I've got nothing to lose now. No. Do you see what I'm saying? But gone are the days, you know, back in the well, day. Well, you would have called like, them out anyway. Well, back in the day, would be like, we must do the righteous thing, guys. Avengers, uh, uh, um, you know, um, <laughs> um, you know, let's go. And da -da -da -da. and it's just like, if you guys don't care, I don't care. I just think it's funny. But I just mm. can't wait to get to the point where I'm naming and shaming motherfuckers. I can't wait. Because what are you going to say? What are you gonna say? Yeah, well, we're not booking you. You don't want to be. Well, booked. not even that. Yeah. It's just like it's just like the thing about um, my mouth that people are like, oh, really? It's like when I'm cussing you out. These are not presumptions. No, they're facts. Like, so what are you gagging about? <laughs> okay, everyone's gagging because they're like, oh my god, someone's finally said or whatever. But I'm not a person that's like, you know, I don't know. You're you're beautiful. I'm like you're so freaking fat. Like that would never be me, bitch. You know no. what I mean? I'm cussing you for what I see in front of me or what you've done. And please believe before I get into the arena, I have done all the research to make sure that I'm not looking like a fool, yeah. or that there could be a, a B side to it. Mm. So what do we? Do you know what I mean? So yeah. when I get to that position where like you know you do hot topics and there's the dancer edition because obviously you know what I do. I'm naming and shaming because what are you gonna? This is what you did. Yeah. This is how you got there. Say something. Say, take a holiday. Go to Benidorm and oh, under I don't. the pillow in shame. Glad I'm not this person. If if you're watching this and this is you, <laughs> you know, orcs, you know. And I don't think I don't think we've met. You know, the, this person might have done my class. I don't even know. The thing is, when I when the when I kept on hearing the name and then I see the the picture, I'm like, who the fuck is that? And they're like, Cisco. They were like, your general. I was like. Oh, oh, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, because you know, like if you're not the kids or a booking dancer, there's still other jobs available, but we knew everyone. Do you see mm. what I'm saying? Who are you? How did you get? Where did you come from? Like, honey, like literally privilege served to you in a platter, bitch. And because your man is good at what he does, you've managed to sustain that coin, bitch, but have nothing to show for it. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, honey. <laughs> Nothing. I said that.
You see what I'm saying? Like nothing. Not even not even a look, honey. Mic and drop. That's what, and that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. So but I'm not, because you know what? I was very fiery and very outspoken and, and quite crass in some cases um, in the industry because I thought I was entitled to, to, to do so. So as I'm still humbling myself, I'm just like, there'll be an opportunity for these things to happen when I do my podcast and I'm talking about um, my journey with certain artists and stuff mm. like that. Of course, these people are going to come in yeah. because they now have worked with them later. Mm. So I ain't, got, I ain't afraid to name and shame because am I lying? No. Am I exaggerating a story? No. So what you mad about? You're just mad that you finally got caught. Because yeah. people be knowing, people be talking, but because dancers are so terrified to speak up or stand their ground because of the ripple effect of being called a diva are too difficult. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm saving the spice for my content. So when I got more viewers, so I can be like, you. Oh, and come to my show the next episode to try and defend yourself. Please do. Yeah, you're welcome to come and yeah, take the hot go. seat. Let's go. Because this is... But soon come. Well, we will promote that fucking podcast like no tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, people have no shame. That's all it is. It is on that bombshell. <laughs> on that note, let's go and teach. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I love you. You're the we best. We see you. Bye. Peace. Bye.